Hi, this is Brenton, and welcome back to Me Channel. And today we're going to be talking about gamma amino butyric acid and what it's all about. The short form is GABA, and as you can see here, this is its chemical formula. What is GABA? Well, GABA is a neurotransmitter, and here's a picture of just a basic neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitters are essentially chemical messengers that lie within your brain. Neurotransmitters can stimulate your brain by sending specific signals to your central nervous system, which mainly consists of your brain and spinal cord. GABA is generally known for producing a sort of calming effect, so it's associated with cell hyperactivity associated with stress, anxiety, and fear reactions. What scientists refer GABA as is a non-protein amino acid neurotransmitter, and here are some more examples of those. How does GABA work? Well, GABA is a very common inhibitory neurotransmitter found in your body. Now, how do inhibitory neurotransmitters work? In between each nerve cell is a tiny bit of fluid-filled area called the synapse. Neurotransmitters must carry their signals across the synapse and then land and bind on specific receptors located on the next nerve cell, like a key that can only fit its partner lock. Inhibitory neurotransmitters prevent or block messages and decrease the stimulation of nerve cells in your brain. Now this is an image of GABA and glutamate. GABA and glutamate act as a sort of on and off switch in your body, but we're not going to talk about this today. Generally, there are two types of GABA, being GABA-A and GABA-B. When GABA bonds to receptors, the result is that they decrease the responsiveness of the nerve cell. This means as an inhibitory neurotransmitter, GABA lessens the ability of a nerve cell to receive, create, or send chemical messages to other nerve cells. By slowing certain brain functions, GABA is said to be able to relieve stress, anxiety, and even improve sleep. Now, what are some conditions that GABA contribute to? Certain neurological and health conditions are said to be related to when GABA levels aren't natural. You can experience some symptoms like anxiety and mood disorders, schizophrenia, autism spectrum disorder, depression, epilepsy and seizures, hepatic encephalopathy, Huntington disease, dystonia and sp spasticity, and hypersomnia. So yeah, just a lot of bad stuff. And the thing that's bad about GABA levels not being natural is that high levels of GABA also seem to produce similar symptoms. Now, what drugs are generally associated with GABA? The category of drugs usually associated with GABA are drugs called benzodiazepines. These drugs include drugs like Valium, Ativan, and Xanax. These drugs have effects on the GABA-A receptors. Benzodiazepines have a lot of good use inside of the medical industry, like for anesthesia, alcohol withdrawal, sleep disorders, anxiety, muscle spasticity, and so on. And here are the chemical structures for each. One thing that you can notice about the chemical structures of each of these is that they're relatively similar in basic structure except Xanax is missing the oxygen at the end. So what are some problems with these drugs being available? Well the obvious answer for this one is addiction. Addiction is frequently associated with adolescents and young adults who take the drug orally or crush it up and snort it. Abuse of this drug is particularly high in other drug users because it's very common for other drug users to co-abuse benzodiazepines to enhance the euphoria effect. Why this is bad is because it slows down the central nervous system. Benzodiazepine abusers can suffer from amnesia, hostility, irritability, and vivid disturbing dreams. Advent abusers of these types of drugs suffer extreme drowsiness, confusion, impaired coordination, decreased reflexes, respiratory depression, comas, and possibly even death. And benzodiazepine withdrawals are also a very big issue. 
but there are treatments for conditions that affect GABA levels and the addiction of the drugs. For example, if someone is taking too much of this drug or taking it without medical usage, using the drug improperly, a common drug that is used to treat benzo addictions and overdoses is a drug called flumazenil. Flumazenil is also used to improve the mental status of people who suffer from hepatic encephalopathy. Now a way to treat lowered levels of GABA without taking any medication is dietary supplements. GABA is actually present in some fermented foods such as kimchi and miso. It's also found in foods such as brown rice, soybeans, chestnut mushrooms, tomatoes, spinach, broccoli, cabbage, and sweet potatoes. The silver lining to this though is that much of your GABA dietary supplements might not be able to make it into your brain. And this is because your blood-brain barrier poses a big difficulty to this, since it is a very unique membrane that only allows certain molecules to make it into your brain. So, for today's conclusions, what do we have? Well, for starters, be responsible. Don't abuse drugs that can have long-lasting of negative effects on your body. Only use medicines that are prescribed to you by professional doctors. Next, eat healthy and keep track of your daily nutrient intake. Pay attention to what you need in your diet. It's honestly extremely amazing what a simple change in your diet can do for your body's overall health and needs. So if you're suffering from any issues that might be related to missing nutrients or something you shouldn't have ate, try to find someone who can advise you on a better diet and it can really help you, trust me. And on that note, seek help if you need it. If you feel that something is wrong and you don't really know exactly what, don't be afraid to ask someone for their support, especially if it's someone who's professional and might be able to help you in various ways. And with all of that said, I hope that was helpful.